When Boston schools reopened this year, students pivoted from Zoom sessions to in-person learning, but six schools took that to another level with more structured physical activity and some incentives. It was part of a wellness campaign called Boston Back Into Motion with support from the Boston Foundation and the school system partner, Playworks New England. To tell us about the effort are the Director of Development at Playworks, Jessica Igo, and the Foundation's Associate Vice President for Education to Career, Elizabeth Polly, I'd like to thank you both for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to start with Elizabeth because you know, this is an unusual time that we're still emerging from here, but uh, go, go back a little bit earlier to the thinking about this program. Uh, what made the Boston Foundation want to come on strong with physical activity in April? Well, the Boston Foundation has long been committed to getting young people moving. We know that it's good for their physical health and their mental health, and also the joy that they might find in school. But this year, more than any other, with kids being home and isolated for so much of the school year, knowing that they were sitting in front of screens and being way more sedentary than they normally would have been, we thought April is the time to get all of our wonderful physical activity partners together and get kids moving. The schools were coming back into in-person sessions, the weather was turning nicer, and it was time to bring Boston back into motion. So that's how right. it got going. Right. Jessica, uh, you know, anybody who, who, who gets moving physically will burn off calories, but this program is about more than that. What exactly were you trying to accomplish? Great question. So. Recess is typically the best time of the day for kids to be active, but very often it can be challenging for schools. And what we know is that play is one of the most natural ways kids learn. And so it's valuable, not just for physical activity, but to build and restore relationships and to help kids feel connected into their school community. So by leveraging recess, by connecting with this campaign, you're able to support kids as they return to school and as they re-engage in in-person learning. Uh, coming back to Elizabeth, you, you know, what you also have to do here is not just open the door and the stu students want to run around. You also want to get the teachers, the administrators on board. Uh, um, what did you do to make that happen? Well, frankly, we all need to get moving after the last year. And so it's good for teachers, adults, educators, everybody to get moving. And for school-based and nonprofits that work with young people, it's especially important because that can create a culture of movement, of joy, of fun. Um, so we joined with our partners from Playworks New England and Box and all of the sports teams uh, in our region and Blue Cross Blue Shield to create some incentives. So we offered uh, small grants um, to schools. The Red Sox generously offered a play ball event for the winter and there'll be equipment and gift cards going to schools that really got young people moving. And Jessica, what, what happened when, when these participating schools let the students have a motion break? Uh, that was the term used. What exactly happens in a motion break? Sure. So very simple. I think one of the goals of the campaign is just to emphasize how easy it is to incorporate movement and incorporate play into the day. Our educators have done so much this year. We know it has been a really hard year. And so the campaign was designed to make it incredibly easy, really simple videos on different movement breaks, brain activities, quick games that teachers can play and leverage to re-engage their kids and also just to make sure that people were getting moving and staying focused during the day. Good. Elizabeth, what also occurs to me is that you know, you're, you're almost trying to uh, structure things that kids in, in my generation uh, did almost spontaneously when we were younger. Uh, what has changed? Uh, I, mean, I mean, students seem to be more centered around computer terminals or, or, or iPhones. Uh, so it looks like you've got more effort in front of you to get them outside moving. I think that's right, Chris. When you and I were kids, we didn't have iPhones and uh, iPads. And so there wasn't that temptation. I think in this case, it was also about rebuilding a habit. So they had to be in front of their screens all year to access learning. But now it's reminding them of 
the joy and the feeling of moving the exercise and how it's good for both your brain and your emotional health. So I think the reason we are very interested in it is because we think there are ways where kids can start to build healthy habits that will serve them well throughout their life. What kind of habits exactly? We want them moving every day. Uh, ideally 60 minutes a day. Um, some of that happens in school through the Boston Public Schools own efforts, as well as the partners who work closely with schools and then moving after school, just the idea of moving their bodies and you know, getting some exercise every day. Yeah. Jessica, what about the social uh, emotional part of this? And maybe even the need to be inclusive because you, you might have students with disabilities or maybe students who might be uh, set apart in some other way uh, in the classroom, but you know, m- maybe when they're outside moving around, the chemistry changes. How, how does that work? Great question. So as we said, play is one of the most natural ways that kids learn. It's how they start to build relationships. It's how they start to learn to take risks, to uh, regulate their emotions and their bodies. And it, it's an incredibly natural um, language list activity. And so kids are able to engage in play safely. Uh, we work really hard to build an inclusive environment where all students are welcome and all students feel safe. And by doing that, you can actually really transform a school's entire climate where uh, you see bullying decrease because kids are using conflict resolution tools that they're learning through play. So rather than getting an argument over who was safe or out at first base in kickball, kids rock, paper, scissors and use conflict resolution in order to get back in the game. Elizabeth, uh, the, the, these physical programs with, that are run by Playworks, they, they've been around for a while in the school system, and it's certainly a, a much larger number of schools. Is there anything that we know so far about the effect on things like either academics, school climate, or, or the number of suspensions? Oh, that's such a good question, Chris. I think Playworks has been terrific about capturing their their data and evaluating their impact on schools. And I would say the same for our other physical activity partners and and the many nonprofits that work with schools. I think what we've seen in the data and what we hear anecdotally from principals is when kids are moving through recess, through PE, through movement breaks in classes, the culture of the school is more positive because as Jesse said, there's less bullying, there's less you know, playground conflict coming into the classroom. And they've actually found they're able to recapture instructional minutes by having kids you know, burn off some energy, get focused, get some you know, oxygen to their brains and learn some conflict resolution skills while having fun while moving. So we think it's good for, both their physical health, but also the culture and the climate in the buildings that they'll be in. Jessica, there was also some competition involved here as far as getting students to participate. The winner was a Rafael Hernandez school near Eggleston Square. Anything you can tell me about something they did that was so special? I think, you know, the Hernandez team is just truly exceptional. They have such a strong school community and their entire team, so teachers, the reset team, Coach Leah from Playworks, the principal, everyone stepped up and found ways to incorporate uh, the different challenges every single day. So whether they were at recess or doing dance breaks in the classroom, they really got creative with it and ensured that the kids had a lot of fun while doing it. I think that's the other point here is, you know, as Elizabeth said, this is about joy and the value of joy for kids. The happier, the more engaging you can create the the educational experience, the more kids will benefit. Elizabeth, I want to ask you about one other possible ripple effect of a wellness program like this, because I know you're working directly with students, but, you know, they come home to their parents, um, and they start talking about things, uh, uh, they, they have different attitudes about physical activity. Doesn't that translate maybe into some health gains for the parents as well? I I sure hope so. I think, again, this year, especially, we all need to get moving. It's good for all of our physical uh, and and mental health uh, experiences. So our hope is, and in April, there was the April break. And so we, you know, highlighted activities that families could do together as part of the daily movement breaks. And we're hoping that continues throughout the summer. Great. Right. I'd like to thank you both very much uh, for being with us. That's Jessica Igo from Playworks and Elizabeth Pauly 
from the Boston Foundation. We'll have more news after this message. <laughs> 